In other news, she says there's no magic formula for juggling both a career and raising a family. But Judge Charlene Elder managed to do both and makes history as the first Arab American Muslim woman elected to a high court here in the U.S. Our Sandra Ali spoke to the judge as we mark Arab American Heritage Month. I don't really look at myself as a role model. I know that sometimes some of the kids say that and, and you know, I get asked to speak at things. And, and I think, you know, I, I really, I mean, I'm humbled by that. That's that's really great that people look at it that way. Judge and Charlene think, Elder shies away from talking about herself as a role yeah. model. Instead, she prefers to focus on her job. I have to take it very seriously because I'm dealing with with our families in Wayne County day in and day out. and. You know, it, it's 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 a lot of pressure. Governor Granholm appointed Judge Elder back in 2005. When you're in law school and you're a young lawyer, you're thinking, God, I'd love to be a judge one day. I wasn't really sure what the path would be to get there. Judge Elder now rules in the family division of the Third Circuit Court in Wayne County. The road to get there had many stops along the way, which included having a family. She had her first child while in law school and her second a week after taking the bar exam. In the beginning, I was initially working out of my home, trying to juggle clients and my kids when they were really small. Judge Elder eventually had two more children and continued to work as an attorney. It was like a big juggling act and then Little by little, I was able to venture out and, you know, do more work out of the office. And um, I eventually became magistrate in Dearborn, which uh, they had no women magistrates in the city of Dearborn ever in the history of the city. Growing up in Dearborn, Judge Elder knows she's setting an example for Arab women around the world. She's proud of her Muslim faith. I think that sometimes the litigants come before me and they're a little shocked. I think it gives um, other Muslim women um, a comfort zone when they see me. She often gets asked about her decision to wear a traditional Muslim headscarf or a hijab. For me, it was my, my own personal connection with God. It was something, you know, I, I and I did it much later in life after I'd already been on the bench for three or four years. Through the years, she's evolved and found new ways to give back to the community where she grew up and raised her own family. The community has come a long way. But I think if you go back to when I was getting educated, I could count the Arab American attorneys on my hand. For Judge Elder, success is passed down from generation to generation, and that's the legacy she wants to leave behind for her own children. My biggest role models would probably be my mom and my mother-in-law. They came to this country at 16 years old, had their kids at 17 years old, no formal education, no college education. I mean, but they still instilled in all of their children. All of their daughters are educated. Her best advice for other women, especially moms, don't beat yourself up and do the work. Just work hard. It's not about just being a woman per se. It's just really about being the best you can be, no matter what it is you choose to do. Judge Elder says when she thinks about the legacy she hopes to leave behind, she wants young women to know you don't ever have to give up any of your career goals to become a wife or a mother. Back to you. Oh, that is some good advice. I love her story and her level of balance with all of it. It's, it's amazing yeah. to be able to pull that off for sure. Well, you know.